Welcome to the cockpit of the Sling TSI. Uh, this is a typical um, instrument panel layout for a Sling TSI. Although since it's experimental, they can come in many different flavors. And some of the panels from Midwest Panel Builders have some great new features as well. Uh, but let's do a walk around uh, the panel and look at some of the, the basic features. On the left side here, we have the open and close for the cabin vent and heater. Uh, and that's available here. Um, and then just above that, we have the lane switches. Uh, this is lane A and lane B. These are the uh, two individual lanes of the ECU, uh, the engine ECU. The engine is controlled uh, by a computer, just like uh, modern cars. And so lane A and lane B would replace what, what would be left and right mag in a, in a legacy airplane. Um, below that is the, the key starter. And if we follow the switch pattern downwards, we come to the ECU backup switch. Uh, what this switch does is it connects the uh, engine computer and engine systems, fuel pumps, uh, ignition, etc., directly to the battery. Um, it's used uh, during the pre-start checklist and then it's used in an emergency if both uh, of the two alternators fail in flight, then switching uh, this on connects uh, all critical engine systems directly to the battery. Uh, further along here, we have uh, the main fuel pump and the AUX fuel pump. Uh, this engine has, uh, the Rotax uh, 915 IS engine has dual electric fuel pumps. So we, uh, we fly with the main pump on all day long and uh, below about uh, 2000 feet AGL, we have the AUX pump on as well. Um, a little bit more to the right, we have the master switch. This uh, excites the panel. And then further along here, we have the backup battery uh, switch. This is the backup battery for the EFIS and keeps the EFIS alive uh, during a main power failure. And then here we have EFIS 1, uh, EFIS 2, and EFIS 3 switches. EFIS 1 and 2 are the two G3X touches, which are the primary part of the display. The G3X touch uh, obviously is a fantastic uh, navigator with, with full engine monitoring, primary flight display, and navigation. And it interfaces with the GTN 650 uh, deeply, which is uh, very helpful during IFR flight. If we follow the switches along here, the next one is avionics. And avionics turns on the GTN 650 and the remote mounted uh, Garmin transponder and audio panel. Quite a few of the devices are mounted behind the panel and are controlled by the screen of the, of the G3X uh, touch, like the transponder um, is controlled directly from the screen. Um, the next switch is the prop switch. Uh, we have an electric constant speed prop made by Airmaster in New Zealand uh, in the Sling TSI. And so it needs electrical power to operate. The controller for the prop is at the top here. It, when it's in the auto mode, it has three settings that are primarily used in flight. Takeoff, climb, and cruise. Cruise is 5,000 RPM in this setup. Climb is 5,500 RPM, which is maximum continuous power with the 915 IS engine. And then takeoff, which allows maximum RPM of 5,800 RPM and is used for up to five minutes at the start of a flight. If you would like to select any RPM besides 5,800, 5,500 or 5,000, you can select hold on the prop controller and then use um, this prop adjustment selector to, to dial the exact RPM that you want it to hold as a constant speed prop. Or if you switch the prop to manual mode, you can just set a, a fixed pitch for the prop to maintain and it's not gonna adjust for RPM at all. Coming back down to the switches here, the autopilot switches the next switch. The autopilot has a, um, a dedicated controller. We've got heading bug selectors, altitude bug selectors right here. And you can select any of the lateral modes or vertical modes of the autopilot using this controller, as well as uh, dial in uh, like a desired VSI um, uh, with this scroll wheel. So it, it, real intuitive to operate and uh, real handy. And the combination of uh, the EFIS, the G5 and the autopilot makes this aircraft a TAA, a technologically advanced aircraft, which means you can use it to meet the requirements for commercial rating. Uh, the next row of switches along the, along the right side of the EFIS here are the light switches. We have the nav lights, the landing lights, the taxi lights and the strobe. So these ones are uh, very nicely organized so you can find the light switches when you need them. 
And just to the right of this is the flap selector lever. Um, we normally take off with flaps one, which is about 10 degrees. And we normally land with flaps down, which is about 30 degrees. And you can see by the position of the, of the flap selector, the position of the flaps, as well as the indication on the G3X touch showing the flap position. And of course, you can always look out the window. The trim the control for this airplane is on top of the stick and it's uh, trimmed down and trim up. Um, and autopilot disconnect is also on the control stick. The trim is automatic when you have the autopilot engaged. So once the autopilot is engaged, it'll set the desired uh, pitch trim in flight automatically. Above the autopilot controller is the GTN 650 COM nav and GPS IFR navigator. Uh, this uh, allows this airplane to be an IFR machine and you can fly an IMC with the Sling TSI. Uh, the integration with the GTN 650 and the G3X Touch is also uh, fantastic and allows you to use the primary uh, G3X Touch as a, as a flight display uh, in IFR. And of course, this is backed up by the G5, which has its own little included backup battery. And this provides all the, all the primary flight information and it will control the autopilot in the event of the G3X Touch failing. Uh, further on to the right, we've got a pitot heat switch and this airplane has extended tanks and it has a transfer pump to pump from the extended tanks. And then uh, down here is a row of circuit breakers and across the bottom of the passenger uh, uh, EFIS are a row of circuit breakers, easy to access, easy to see. Then further to the right is our ELT controller as well as um, the vent open and close for the fan and heater. Coming back to the middle of the cockpit, we have the heater controls and the cabin fan controller. And these are different in different models. Uh, this is how this one's set up. Below that, we have the parachute activation handle. Um, you can pull this handle in the event of an emergency like a mid-air collision or an engine failure of a, uh, unlandable terrain and the whole airplane will come down with the parachute. Just below that, we have the fuel selector. You can select the left or right tanks just by uh, switching the selector. If you do need to turn off the fuel, you have to pull the little locking mechanism back and it goes into the off detent. To get it out of there, you have to pull the little locking mechanism back again and then you can easily switch between left and right. Moving further back, on the left side, we have the throttle, full throttle and idle. And on the right side, we have the standard handbrake, a little unusual for some people but very easy to get used to. Um, to stop, you pull back on the handbrake and uh, you can use one hand to manage both the throttle and the brake. If you are taxiing and you wanna accelerate, you apply a little bit of throttle. If you wanna slow down, you pull the throttle back and if necessary, you pull back on the brake. To accelerate again, you release the brake and advance the throttle. So it is a simple one-handed operation and very easy to manage. The parking brake is engaged by pulling back on the brake lever and switching on the parking brake valve. And now the parking brake is set. And that's a basic tour of the Sling TSI instrument panel uh, with all of the great bells and whistles that it has. Flight in VFR and IFR is approved and lots of new modifications coming all the time, but that's the basic layout.